Stanford University. The issue of when police are allowed to use force in general and de deadly force in particular is governed by two bodies of law. One, uh, each state would have a statute which would define the circumstances and also there's a federal constitutional overlay on the state law. And in general, the more dangerous the situation that the officer confronts, uh, the more violent the crime, the, the more force is permitted. But the overall constitutional standard is what is reasonable as judged from what the officer knew at the time at which the event occurred. Unfortunately, we don't have the best data on police killings of others. Since this is voluntary reporting on the part of the police departments, uh, many police departments simply fail to report or don't fully uh, record the total number of deaths. But we do have the time series that the FBI does report, and as long as the reporting is not getting worse over time, uh, the trend does seem to be downwards. There's been a lot of literature over the last 20 or 30 years on implicit bias among police, and so a lot of training is going into recognizing that and counteracting that. It also makes a difference to monitor the police to sort of weed out the individuals who uh, seem to be using excessive force. I would also say that there does need to be more done in promoting better understanding between the police and the community. And to get that relationship on a more solid basis, I think both the police and the community leaders are going to have to take some additional steps. The police are gonna to have to be more respectful to the community, and the community is going to have to be more respectful to the police as well. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.